Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, Dr. Dual Sport. Our beginning, uh, let's see, our temperature is 23 degrees Fahrenheit. 23 degrees. Beginning mileage 20839. 20839. I'm going to head up the street here, and uh, I actually got to stop at the service station here and get a little gas. We're right on the empty here and I didn't get it filled yesterday and then we'll go on a little putt-putt ride today. So, Well, we're ready to go now. It took seven gallons. The fuel price was uh, two twenty-nine per gallon and that was for uh, 88 octane no ethanol. You know, a while back I was, uh, you know, I, ha I was wondering about the uh, this particular station. I, I, I often go there because it's close to my house and uh, I actually have a charger kit out there for all the, you know, the, you know when, if, when they're open, then uh, if I have somebody else driving one of my vehicles, they can just fill it up and say charge it. But, uh, the, the BMW, uh, you know, in the order, owner's manual, it, it uh, says that it requires the, what, 91 or 92 octane. And this particular fuel uh, says that it's 88. Um, anyway, I found out a little more about that. The, some of the other stations uh, uh, do have the 92 octane. But it, but it has the uh, ethanol in it, and uh, I talked to uh, Ron, who uh, he's the owner of a uh, uh, anyway the business. They sell, they're a dealer for uh, like Polaris, Arctic Cat, Yamaha, and some others. And uh, I asked him about it, and he told me, he said that they had done tests on their snowmobiles, and they had uh, they'd tried, uh, you know, a mix of the uh, the higher octane and, and then a uh, mix of the uh, non-ethanol. And he said that they're, uh, if they run the, the, the non-ethanol is by far the best. He said that they're uh, on their snowmobiles. Their uh, head temperature would be 200 degrees lower with the non-ethanol. So, and he he suggested that 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 it would be the fuel that I should run. So, and you know the bike seems to run fine and everything, good power and everything. But but I just you know where, where the book says it it's supposed to have the higher octane. I I wondered. So anyway, if anybody has any. Feedback on uh, you know the fuel you have in your area. Do, do you have the ethanol and uh, uh, can can you can you purchase the non-ethanol where you live or what's your feelings about it? So anyway, we're gonna uh, take a short little ride this morning. I don't I don't know. Every day it's the same old story. I got something I got to get back for, but. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I'm not just gonna go blast down the freeway. I got. Uh, I'm gonna do some two lane. Uh, I'm gonna go out north of here, hit the the old highway. I'm gonna go north to a little town and then down through uh, a little canyon called Goshen Canyon. And then we'll. Uh, at that point, we'll uh, decide how we're gonna loop loop around to get back. You know, there's two or three different ways you can come back so we'll give you all a, a little peek of uh, going through the Goshen Canyon here it's it's a pretty by the sign there you can see it's uh, isn't uh, by any means it is not a straight road <laughs> it says 35 miles an hour so anyway it's a it's a nice little road through here uh, we still haven't got the sun. The sun hasn't uh, poked up over the mountain yet. For 
I know a lot of you guys live uh, where it's flat. Here we're in a like a mountain valley, and so the we have to wait till the a little later for the sun uh, to poke over the east mountain. You know, so it's like our sun up is actually be you know might be 20 minutes later depending on where you are in the valley the closer you are to the east mountain then the uh, the later you know that the, the sun would hit you so but this is it's a nice little uh, nice little canyon to cruise through now here we are uh, up on the top of the mountain here at a little mining town called Eureka, Utah. And uh, we'll cruise on through here and let you take a peek. It's uh, kind of funny when you go through the the old uh, business section of town here. It it uh, just it looks like a lot like. Uh, other little mining towns that I've been through, like uh, that, uh, that Jerome, uh, Arizona. You know, it reminds me of that. You know, everything's uh, built on the side of the hill, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of little stores and stuff. I guess in the late uh, 1800s and uh, early 1900s, this was had some of the wealthiest mines uh, in Utah. You know, there was a lot of money here, and I guess they, uh, at one time, I, I forget what they say, There's there were 20 some odd bars, or <laughs> something like that. Anyway, it's all gone now, everything's boarded up, and, but it's, it's still neat to look at the, the old buildings and the architecture, and the uh, Neat, neat place to look at. There. I guess the whole area here is just underground, is uh, riddled with uh, mines. You know, you can see the some mine works there, where the whatever they call it, where they bring the ore up. But anyway, it was uh, lead, gold, silver. I guess you know the they've actually done a bunch of clean up here of the soils and stuff. I guess they had a little some lead in them and stuff so they the government spent a lot of buku bucks there here a few years ago to haul off dirt and then haul dirt back in so well we'll cruise on down the road. Well guys we pop over this little hill here and then we'll be uh, dropping on down into the valley you get to see a little view of where I live. This is quite a steep little hill here I don't I'm not sure how far it drops more than a thousand feet probably 1200 feet or 1500 anyway it's I don't know the grade but when I was a kid back in the 60s I don't know if any of you were around then or remember that but we used to we'd bring our cars out here and if we wanted to see how fast our car would go then we'd bring it to the top of the hill, and then we'd head downhill. And uh, as soon as we hit the straightaway here, we'd get it all wrapped up. And see how fast, see if we could make her up to like 120 or something. And then we'd kick it out of gear and coast. See how, <laughs> see how far we could coast. <laughs> I don't think uh, kids do that silly stuff like that anymore. <laughs> more and it's probably good they don't anyway we'll uh, see old up on top of Mount Nebo but I bet it's cold up there because it's still uh, still cold down here well we'll uh, see you back at the trailer in a few here ending mileage 20914 20914. Please like, subscribe, or comment if you'd like. This is Dr. Dual Sport. Out.